Hi everybody, my name is Neil and welcome to my layout, the Lucasin and Southern. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I built this Helix right behind me. So I hope you enjoy it. Here's a diagram of the lower level of my layout. You can see the helix location on the left. Instead of using the traditional circle rings for the helix, I'll be making octagonal rings by cutting eight segments for each ring and gluing them together. And here's how I did it. To make the octagonal rings, I start by ripping my half inch four x four foot plywood into five and a quarter inch strips. I'll be able to cut three segments from each strip, so I will need 18 strips to get the 52 segments. I need to make six and a half levels. To cut the proper angle for each segment, I set my miter gauge at 22 and a half degrees. Next, I make the 22 half degree end cut on each of the strips. I set a stop block at 15 and 7 8 inches and I make the opposite cut on the first segment. This cut is also the first cut of the second segment. I flip the board over to cut the second segment and then flip it again to cut the third segment. Then rinse, wash, repeat until all segments are cut. I will have a set of drop wires on each level. To run these wires under the track, I make four shallow data cuts in seven of the segments. To join my segments together, I'm using biscuits. Here I'm making the slots in the end of the segments using a biscuit joiner. To make sure all the slots line up, I'm using a makeshift jig. I cut all the slots on one end of the segments, and then I flip the jig around to cut the slots on the other end. I didn't video gluing up the segments because honestly, that's very boring. However, I was specific in the order I glued them up. I have eight segments on each ring, number is shown. Where the level splits and in the back, I left unglued for adjustments. And then I make segment three my wire drop segment. To glue the segments together to make a level, first I glued one and two together, then three and four, segments five and six, and finally seven and eight. Then I glued the first two pieces together to make half of the level, and then I glued the other two pieces to make the other half. And as mentioned, I left these areas marked with an X unglued. And now let's see how these will all stack up. And now it's time to get to the fun stuff. What makes this helix unique is that instead of hand laying my curves, I decided to route a curve into the level. This will ensure that the track maintains a perfect radius curve. I know I'm not the first to do this, but in all my searching, I've only found one other video on it. To make the groove, I'm using a circle cutting jig with my router fitted with a 3 quarter inch straight bit. This is a double helix, so for the outer loop, I'm setting the jig at 36 inches, which will give me a radius of 18 and 3 8 inch. I'm making the groove 1 8 inch deep, which puts the ties on my code 80 track just below the top of the level. For the inner loop, I set the jig at 33 inches. This gives my inner loop a radius of 17 and 5 8 inch. For an 11 by 12 bedroom layout with limited space, this is a pretty good size helix for end scale. I will say that routing all these grooves was a lot of fun, but it sure kicks up a lot of sawdust. We're almost ready to bring these inside. While the levels are stacked, I'm drilling the holes for the 5 16th inch threader rods I'm using to separate the levels. The levels are stacked on the helix base, so I flag the drill bit with tape to drill down just enough to mark the location of the thread rods on the base, but not to go into my workbench. And we have one more thing to do. Need to cut an access hole in the base, just in case. And we're done. And since it's gonna be covered up, Here's just a quick shot of the base that's going to hold the helix. I use these screw-in T-nuts that I found on Amazon. They are real easy to install and secure. Just drill the appropriate size hole, tap in the T-nuts, secure them with the screws provided, and then thread in the threaded rods. 
Now I didn't film threading the rods because that's about as boring as watching glue dry. To set the incline on the first level, I used spacers to obtain the 2.3% grade to reach the vertical distance of 2.2 inches that I will maintain between each level. Once that was set, I used 2.2 inch spacers for each subsequent level. Then I tighten down the nuts and start laying the track for that section. I laid each level a half section at a time and repeated the same procedure for each. Each section was attached by using joining connector plates. I shifted the section as needed and secured the plates at an angle to prevent them from swiveling. To secure the track, I used a pin vise to pre-drill holes for my rail spikes. I then used my rail spike pliers to insert micro-engineering medium rail spikes. I staggered my rail joiners to prevent the rails from kinking. This is a great technique to use and easy to master. The rails are cut at the appropriate section and then using a hobby knife you remove the molded rail spikes where the rails are going to be joined. The joiners are then slid onto the rails between the rail and the ties. It makes for a really clean looking connection. Each level has its own dedicated wire drop. It's probably overdoing it, but better to have power and not need it than to need power and not have it, right? And with each level having power, I soldered all the joiners on each level, with the exception of the joiners near the level split, to allow for some expansion and contraction of the rails. And now with all the soldering done, I connect my drop wires to the main bus. I put these drop wires on segment 3 because it puts them behind the helix when you're viewing the layout, but it's still easy to get to. And now the moment you've been waiting for to see if this thing actually works. So kick back, relax, and let's take a few trips on the helix. And while we're here, I'll share some additional information.